Miami had a lot of good things happen against Indiana last night. The young guys continued to play well. Omar Yurtsman, Casey Paula had some good, a decent game after the one they, the tough game they had against Detroit. But Duncan Robinson and Tyler here are obviously the storylines from this one. Both led the way with 26 points in totally different ways. Duncan Robinson just had a, after missing two early threes, he kind of got it going ever since there. Tyler here was kind of up and down. And then he just goes on these runs where he just absolutely can't be stopped. And he goes on these ignitable runs uh, as the spark off the bench. So I just want to go through some of the plays that we saw from them, starting out with Duncan Robinson. And it starts with obviously the threes he can make. And it starts with looking at the way defenses are defending him. And it's interesting because no matter what version of Duncan Robinson you're getting, no matter if he's 0 for 4 from 3, you never want to do this as, as a defense guarding Duncan Robinson, which is on a handoff, go under the screen. Like that is an indication for Duncan Robinson just to immediately pull up. And no team wants Duncan Robinson to shoot, like I said, no matter if he's off or not. So right here, they go into the screen. He rides right over the top of him. And that was a big shot for him because getting that one to fall, that kind of led to the rest of them. He missed you know, two easy ones. His first two threes were easy, and he probably would have had 32 points if he would have made those. Uh, but obviously that's a different story. But just seeing them go to, under the screen is a quick indication. The next play down the line, they after he gets going, as I'm going to talk about in a little bit, the inside game got going as well. But they weren't going under screens anymore, and that's just going to be the thing throughout this season. Then you got to adjust from there, and that's what he's been doing. When they start to go over the screen, then he can drive. If they go under the screen, he can shoot. So right here, they're trailing him in the same exact type of play. Now it's a two-on-one, and that's something he's been good at even last season. But it, the difference is he had a Bam Adebayo who could stop at that elbow, and he could just make an easy pass right there, or he could lob it up. It's a little bit of a different big. It's kind of just find him in the midsection when you're playing with Omer Yurtsevin. But Duncan doesn't even have to get that far because on this 2 and one he doesn't even have to do that because he just goes up and lays it in. His inside game is a real threat. And as I said before on Twitter, if Duncan Robinson has been making threes all season at a decent rate, we could be having a totally different conversation about Duncan Robinson this season because his growth as a driver, as an inside threat, is real. It's not just him making some layups. Like, he actually – keeps his dribble alive. He actually finishes around the rim decently and he makes some nice plays. That's the difference maker. I think we knew about that part of his game that that would come along. The thing we didn't know it would come along is something I've been drilling for probably two years now, which is the Duncan Robinson one dribble pull up into a mid range. It changes everything about his game because once the three is falling and guys are flying out of him, like they usually do, it's just a simple way to get a wide open shot every single time. And also it leaves the defense thinking next time you get that ball, are you going to take that, that pump fake one dribble pull up? It makes them a little you know, less likely to just completely fly out at the three and, and kind of give themselves up. So as we see right here, Tyler Hero is just kind of in a weird spot. He finds Duncan Robinson. It's late in the shot clock, one second left. That also has something to do with why they fully committed to this three. But as I go back a little bit, he totally throws him out of the play right here. One dribble pull up into the baseline. And he knocks it down. I don't think I really expected it to be a baseline jumper. When I talk about a one dribble pull up, it feels like that's more of like a wing thing and he can step in the elbow. But if you could do that as well, that is completely useful for a heat offense, especially right now when you're down so many guys. That could be a difference maker. It feels like every game Duncan Robinson three has been falling. The two point shots stand out. The game against Detroit, we saw him go two for 10 from three. The issue is that he went 0 for 1 from 2. Like what shooting only shooting 1 2 only just really restricts him in that area when the 3 is not falling. But when it is falling and he has nights like this, the two point shots, the layups, the mid ranges just really come right behind. And that's just big time for him. The other guy is Tyler Hero tonight, as I'm going to go through right here. He came back and kind of early on, he had some just he looked short on some of his shots, which is usual when a guy comes back from that type of injury, that type of absence. Uh, but it doesn't take him long to get back into things. But I just want to go through something differently. It's not just as much. We saw the crazy shot making, the crazy pull up in the fourth. But something interesting is how he's turning defenses, individual defenders' bodies in a way that he hasn't before. And I just want to go through it right here. Something he did a lot of last season, he almost did too much of, is refusing screens. He wasn't taking the screen. If he took the screen, it was probably going to be a snake dribble back inside. Uh, and if the screen came most of the time, he was going to refuse it and go the opposite way. That leaves, you know, a very predictable player, you know, when they're reading a scouting report on a specific guy. So does it go right here? The difference here, he gets it, and they're going to set a quick pick and roll. 
As I go back right here, it looks normal. This is the play as I go through right, real quickly where Tyler Hero comes down the lane and gets an easy dunk. But why did he get that easy dunk? And I think the reason is we're going to see right here as I pause. He has his waist turned towards his right, and he looks like he's about to do that hesitation dribble that he does and fly right. He does not. And the difference is last season, his waist was not turned right when he was refusing screens. His waist was turning left, and he was going to go, and he was predictable, and guys were going to cut him off, and he was going to have to be – you know, try to fight through it or fight back. Now it's he gives that slight hesitation, faces the opposite way, and he explodes right here. And the guy is absolutely lost, and he gets the easy dunk. Like, that's what's big time about that play. The dunk is fun because he got down the lane like that, and it's not really expected. But the way he's able to turn these defenders in this way is an intriguing thing. This is another one, the same type of thing. Is he going to get it right here at the top of the key? He looks like he's going to pull up. He – not only can he turn a defender's buddy, but he also can react to when a defender is kind of in a weird spot. When they're facing that opposite direction, he can attack that front foot right here on this pump fake. The defender is obviously in a very awkward position because that is a hard position to recover from. If he goes and attacks that front foot, he does right here. He goes right at it, steps back, and a tough, tough shot. Like that is the ultimate tough shot. He probably could have got something a little easier. Obviously, they came with the double because Casey Paula planted on that wing three just basically tells your his individual defender to help out on that top of the key on Tyler Hero. He goes and talking about a tough shot, Tyler Hero loves tough shots. It seems like he's even better when he has tough shots like that. But that's important. Attacking, reading a de individual defenders is something he's gotten so much better at. We talk about reading plays, reading defenses as a whole, but I feel like him reading individual defenders, his one-on-one -on -one matchup is probably more important than any reads he can make on the basketball floor of the season. But speaking of reads, I just want to go through one last one to show that even early on when it seemed like he wasn't at his best and he, they needed him to be at his best in a game like this, ultimately they didn't because everybody kind of stepped up. But looking at how he can still control a game when you have lineups like with Gabe Vincent and, and Marcus Garrett and, and Dwayne Dedman and the limited offensive weapons, even though guys like that have been pretty good lately, it's just interesting that he doesn't even have to score to maximize these type of lineups as we see right here. Another type of pick and roll, he's just going to roll through it. And as we see right here, they're going to come and they're not switching this. This is kind of just basically a drop possession because uh, Hort, Duarte is kind of just not even staying on Deadman. He's just coming to blitz Hero still. The difference is Hero is going to make an incredible pass right here. His left hand feeds inside to Deadman. He knows the weak side defenders, I go back one more time, is just kind of not make, fully committing to – coming over for the help on Deadman, and it seemed like he was waiting that extra second because he could make that skip pass with his left hand to Marcus Garrett in the corner if needed. So if I go one more time, he sees he's not fully committing. He then feeds it inside, and Deadman can go right up. Like, that is important. We're talking about reads with Tyler Hero individually, but he's making reads as a whole on, on a team without Jimmy Butler, on a team without Bam Adebayo, and so many guys that are missing. He's able to step up in this way and take control of an offense and give Kyle Lowry a rest. And they're able to kind of still go back and forth with the Kyle uh, hero lineups and still feel comfortable and dominate a game like this. Like that's important. The difference is now we have to see sustainability. And I think we're going to see that on an even greater level, as I said, when Jimmy, when Pam return.